Hello, everybody. I'm Happy Caldwell, and thank you for joining us for today's edition of Arkansas Live. All week long, I've been teaching you about no more limits. And I'll tell you at the end of the broadcast today how you can get your copy of my book, No More Limits. So stay tuned as Arkansas Live starts right now. You know, I would like to continue reading uh, these characteristics of barrier breakers. So if you've been taking notes, uh, let's continue here. Um, I think the last one that we uh, addressed was barrier breakers are truly committed and dedicated hard workers. They need no supervising or motivation. You know, that's really a strong attribute to have if you have a staff member that doesn't have to have a fire built under them. They're, they're thinkers on their own. Uh, they're motivated. Um, they do over and above what's necessary. <clears throat> These are characteristics of people who can knock down limits and remove barriers. Next is barrier breakers are a bit unorthodox, <laughs> along with all their other attributes and um, abilities. They don't care whether they are different or not. They are not people pleasers. And I always like to tell staff members and people, look, we don't have to do the same thing the same way all the time. We're open to constructive criticism. And I encourage that. Uh, years ago, I was invited to the U.S. Army War College in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I, I'm excuse me, Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, uh, to attend a strategic um, leadership seminar. And I was invited because I was a CEO of TV and so forth. They didn't know I was a pastor. And we uh, walked the battlefield. It's still the way it was in the 1860s. And uh, we walked the battlefield the first day. And then the second day we met in the war rooms and the uh, captains and majors taught us um, about strategy. Uh, and it was very interesting. Uh, I really learned a lot uh, about how the Army uh, conducts themselves and, and what they do and how they do it. And I learned that strategy is not just getting from point A to point B. Strategy is more than that. Strategy is what do you hope to accomplish getting from point A to point B. And, the, and one of the reasons the South lost the war uh, is because they lost the Battle of Gettysburg. And, you know, they didn't know what they were up against. Uh, the Union Army had uh, reissued uh, troops, refortified ammunition. They were on Cemetery Ridge and the uh, the South came out of the wood line and just walked hand in hand right into their fire, and they were they were defeated. Their strategy was uh, inferior, and their strategy was if we could uh, win this battle, we could send a psychological message uh, to the North, and we can take over uh, Washington D.C. That was their strategy, but their strategy didn't work, and many times it was because of failed. Uh, communication. And I learned that at the uh, War College, they wanted us to do an after action review after every battle. And we had to read several books, Killer Angels. And I'd already read Sun Tzu's book on um, the strategy of, of war. <clears throat> and they would review what they had done to see if they'd done it properly, how they could improve it. Uh, etc. We were awakened every morning. We slept in the barracks and the cannon would go off. Now, all of the United States military generals had graduated from the War College. It predates um, West Point because at one time it was shut down, but it, it was before West Point. And you had Pershing, you had uh, Patton, you had Eisenhower, you had uh, um, a lot of other generals of other armies in different countries that would come uh, to the war college. They would teach strategy. And what the army wanted from us was they wanted to know how we ran our corporations and how it compared to what the army was doing. 
And so, you know, they they dealt with the pyramid structure and uh, the pyramid, uh, all the information and strategy, everything comes from the top down, top of the pyramid to the bottom. And I, I when it got to be my turn, I said, well, we we kind of turned that pyramid upside down and we let all of the information. Of course, we have leadership, but we want to hear from those that are on the bottom of the pyramid, so to speak. We want them to speak into our lives. We want to hear what they have to say. And they were very impressed with that. Now, Army, military is totally different, but I wanted them to know that, you know, if, if you take leadership and just the head buffalo just barks out orders, there's a better way, and that's to filter information coming up from the bottom of the ranks, so to speak, and hear what everybody else says. I asked an airline pilot one time when the airline was having difficulty. And uh, I said, I've noticed the decline in your airline over the years. And he said, yeah, I have too. He said, I've been flying for this airline for 25 years. And he said, it's worse today than it's ever been. I said, well, why don't you say something about it? Why don't you tell uh, your superiors what the problems are and how to fix them? He said, oh, no. He said, they won't listen to us. He said, why don't you tell them? Why don't you write them a letter? They might listen to the customer. Well, they don't listen to anybody except the bookkeeper. Uh, <laughs> the accounting department is driving the airlines, and they're, they have gone down tremendously. Uh, there, there is a, uh, a potential for barrier breakers to be a bit unorthodox. Uh, they're not the norm, and they're not people pleasers. Uh, I know I had a, a staff member one time. He really couldn't get along with anybody but he was the best at what he did. And so you are willing to sacrifice and put up with things, not to the extent that you destroy your staff and your productivity, but barrier breakers, that's what they do. They break barriers. Barrier breakers are goal oriented. They can endure pain and adversity to accomplish their goal. I'm going to read that one again. Barrier breakers are goal oriented. They can endure the pain and adversity to accomplish their goal. Barrier breakers, here's number eight, have an enthusiasm that is contagious. You like to be around those people. They're motivators. They encourage you. Iron sharpens iron, the Bible says. And uh, number nine, barrier breakers are level-headed. They are not easily distracted or spooked. They're not going to give up. They're going to continue until they've accomplished their objective. And number 10, last, barrier breakers. Now, this is admirable, and hopefully you can tag this in here. Barrier breakers always want to help other people grow. They're not just focused on themselves. They want to help other people. Uh, and I've taught this from a visionary perspective if you want to see Habakkuk chapter 2, if you want to see a, a vision, then don't look at the leader. Look at the people. You can see the evidence of the vision in the people. If you don't see the vision in the people, then all you've got is a dictator. That's where a lot of our third world countries uh, have succumbed to. They've succumbed to dictators. They're, they're, they're ruthless. They're murderers. They kill their own people. They're not for the people. They're for themselves. So barrier breakers are concerned about helping other people. Climb up the ladder, if you please. Get promotion. They don't care who gets the credit, but they're a team player, and we're going to see this uh, through. Okay, let's go back to Ephesians 3.20. We read this the other day. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. So, passing the limit. You've got to get beyond the limit, beyond the barrier. And it says that God can do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. To pass, to go beyond the limit. The limit is not acceptable uh, we're not accepting the limit. We're not accepting the boundary. And uh, we are going to um, 
exceed that. I don't know if you remember or you saw the tribute to President George Bush when he died. Um, he was a he was a pilot during World War II and flew off an aircraft carrier. And he said that the one thing that the pilots always looked to uh, as they flew their plane off of the aircraft carrier during the war was he said, we wanted to make sure every time we took off, because they didn't have the instruments that you have today. They had an airspeed indicator. They had an oil gauge. <laughs> they had uh, altimeter. But he said, we always looked to see if we had CAVU, C-A-V-U. CAVU stood for ceiling, uh, ceiling, uh, uh, un, un, ceiling and visibility unlimited. That's it. CAVU, ceiling and visibility unlimited. And he said, as long as we had CAVU, we were in good shape. You have to learn to go beyond the... And I had a friend who was in our church for several years. Uh, he flew uh, uh, aircraft off of a aircraft, aircraft carrier during the war, too. And he flew with uh, Pappy Darnell, the Black Sheep Squadron. They made a TV program out of uh, that unit. And he told me, he said, there were many times when we would go off on a mission... And he said, uh, we didn't have the communication, the radios and uh, everything that you have today. He said, there were a lot of times where we just had to f find our way back to the carrier the best way we could. And uh, these, are, these are people that were known as the greatest generation. They exceeded, they passed the limit, they went beyond the limit. How do you go beyond what you... Uh, ask or think. Um, let, let's go over to Philippians chapter 4, just over a couple of pages. Uh, Philippians chapter 4, and let's look at verse 7. And the peace of God which passes uh, all understanding will keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good report, be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Don't think on the limits. Don't think on the barriers or the boundaries. Think on these things. Think on the things that are true, honest, just, pure, lovely, good report, virtue, and praise. Think on, excuse me, those things, and you will surpass the limit. You'll go beyond the limit, and you'll exceed the limit or the barrier. Um, if you think God's thoughts, if you think on these things, he said, how do you get beyond uh, what you think in the spirit, in faith, you call things that are not yet seen as though they were. You know, what is actually happening out there is subject to change. The Apostle Paul said that these things are temporary. Let me, let me see if I can find that um, in Corinthians. I uh, think it is Second Corinthians. If it's not Second Corinthians, <laughs> it's First Corinthians. Okay, hold on just a minute. Anyway, he, he's talking about things that are temporary, things that are subject to change. So instead of thinking on the limits or the failures or the mistakes, you start looking at what the Word of God says. You start using your faith to call things that are not as though they were. And we can go there. Uh, I know we can go there to Romans chapter 4 and verse 17. 
Romans chapter 4 and verse 17. As it is written, I've made you a father of many nations, talking to Abraham, before him whom he believed, before him whom he believed, even God, who quickened the dead and calleth those things that be not as though they were. Now, this is what God told Abraham he was to do. Because Abraham said, you know, I, I'm supposed to be heir of the world, but I, I don't have a son. Uh, my heir is, is this Eleazar, who's the servant in my house. God told him he'd have, son, he'd have a son, and his, his offspring would be as many as the stars in the sky and the sands on the seashore. And so Abraham said, where, where, when's this going to take place? And he told him to call things that are not as though they were. You don't ever accept the status quo. In other words, you don't let the stature of the mountain, the situation, the boundary, the barrier. I think Jesse DePlantis said this one, this way one time. He went to check into a hotel, and they'd messed up his reservations. And he showed him his reservations. They said, well, I'm sorry, we don't, we don't have a room. He said, well, you have a room. You just don't know it yet. <laughs> he said, I want you to go get me somebody that can say yes. Well, they went and got the manager, and he asked the manager, he said, uh, are you the person that can say yes? He said, yes, sir. Then he explained the situation to him. He said, yes, sir, we have a room for you. <laughs> so always look for the person that can say yes. Don't let the person that says no. Now, I'm not talking about being mad, angry, um, obnoxious, uh, critical, critical, judgmental, fight, ang anger. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about... Find out who can say yes. And you begin to call things that are not yet seen as though they were. So you go to the spirit. If you're dealing with a boundary, if you're dealing with a barrier, if you're dealing with a limit, you go in the spirit and you start calling for what is not as though they were. You, you live beyond the limits in the spirit in faith, not in the natural. In the natural, it might look like things are impossible, uh, immovable, but in the spirit, they are movable. And Hebrews chapter 4 says that you have, uh, excuse me, Hebrews chapter 1 verse 14 says that you have ministering spirits, angels who are sent to minister for the heirs of salvation. That's you. So you dispatch your angels to go before you and they begin to work on your behalf. So you build yourself up by praying in the Holy Ghost. Um, Jude 20 says, building yourselves up in the most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. And Romans, uh, 8, uh, Romans 28 uh, says that whatever the Holy Spirit prays according to the will of God is going to work together for your good. Now, don't take that out of its setting. Uh, people use that Romans eight twenty eight, uh, and do much damage with it. it. It doesn't say everything works together for your good. It says the things that the Holy Spirit has prayed according to the will of God works for your good. I mean, even common sense shows you that everything that happens to you is not the will of God. But that's a cop out. That's 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 what people use uh, as an excuse. Well, you never know what God's going to do. And uh, blah, blah, blah. Well, you do if you know his word. Well, everything works out for your good. No, everything doesn't work out for your good. Only the things that the Holy Spirit has prayed according to the will of God are going to work out for your good. Let's go over there and read it so you can see it in your Bible. This is probably one of the greatest revelations that anybody will get. And we're talking about no more limits. In Romans chapter 8, verse 26, listen very carefully. Likewise, the Spirit helps our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself, did you get that? Not itself. The Spirit is not an it. He, he's he. The Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered inarticulate speech and he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the spirit who is he that's searching the hearts the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit is praying 
and making intercession for you. Talking about uh, moving the limits, no more limits. What are the limits? What are the boundaries? You, you don't attack them and you can't change them in the natural, but in the spirit, in faith. Knowing what is the mind of the spirit. Because he, the Holy Spirit, makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all the things that the Holy Spirit is praying according to the will of God. Did you get that? Not all the things that are happening. Not all the limits and boundaries. God's not trying to break your leg to show you he can heal it. He's not trying to work out some mysterious purpose in your life by causing, you know, you problems. It says the Holy Spirit is making intercession for you according to the will of God. The Holy Spirit is praying for you, through you. And what the Holy Spirit is praying according to the will of God is going to work together for good to those that love God called according to, to his uh, purpose. It, so it's, it, it's not, it doesn't say all things are going to work together for your good. It says all the things that the Holy Spirit prayed according to the will of God are going to work together for you. Good. James 1.13 says, let no man say when he's tempted of God that he's tempted of evil, tempted of evil that he's tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man with evil. We've got it all backwards. And, and you know, there are people that are teaching this to reinforce this backwards, <laughs> everything that happens to you. Oh, well, evil came to me, but God's going to work it out for my good. No, that's not what the scripture says. The scripture says that God cannot be tempted with evil. God doesn't use evil to perfect or, or train anybody. Uh, go with me while we're on this <laughs> trail. Let's, let's go over here and uh, read the rest of this to help you. I think this will help you. Now, John chapter 14, and let's look at John chapter 14, verse 8. 16. I will pray the Father, he'll give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it sees him not, neither knows him, but you know him, for he'll dwell with you and be in you. The world does not know or understand the truth. Then in verse 26, the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. So the Holy Spirit is the teacher, not the problem, not the limit, not the boundary. God's not trying to hold you up. You know, a lot of people pray, Lord, if you want me to go through that door, just open it wide. Well, that doesn't take any faith because, you know, anybody can go through an open door. Well, God, if you don't want me to go there, then shut the door. Again, that's not faith. Anybody can stop when the door's shut. But what if God wants you to go through that door and it's shut? What do you do? You kick it open. You push it open. Well, what if God wants you to go uh, or not go through a door that's open? Then you stop. Every open door is not the, doesn't represent the will of God. And every closed door doesn't represent the will of God. Trials and troubles and heartaches and problems. That old country song, heartaches by the number and troubles by the score. <laughs> That's not the way God teaches. You're not like a little pinball in a pinball machine that gets knocked everywhere by the rudder. No, you're, you're overcoming these limits and you're overcoming the boundaries and the barriers by being led by the Holy Ghost. That's why it's so important for believers to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And Jude said, praying in the Holy Ghost. Paul said, praying in tongues more than you all. It's nothing to be afraid of. It's something that you desire and you desire to lead God and direct you. So he says that the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. Go over to John 16 and then let's go. I'm about to run out of time here. John 16 and let's look at verse 13. Howbeit, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, 
He will guide you into all truth. Who's going to guide you? The Holy Spirit. He'll not speak of himself, but whatsoever he hears, that shall he speak. He will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he'll receive of mine and show it unto you. I hope this has blessed you and there's, there's more to come, but I want you to get your copy of my book, No More Limits. Watch this and I'll be right back. The year was 1999 and I was awakened one morning by the Word of God. I heard God say, No More Limits. He told me that we had limited him, just like the children of Israel. Limits come from two sources. They're self-imposed or they're imposed on us by others. I want you to get a copy of my book, No More Limits. To order your copy of No More Limits for $12.99 plus shipping, call us at 1-888-641-3375 or order online at vtntv.com. God has a specific plan for your life, and part of that plan is to walk in victory over every circumstance. Pastor Caldwell's book is designed to help you understand how to remove self-imposed limits and live the abundant life God has for you. Order your copy today and see limitless results in your life. And for our amigos, we have no mas limites. We got Spanish, we've got English, so if you want to order the book, uh, just let us know whether you want it in English or Spanish. And uh, again, these things are going to help you uh, tremendously. Uh, remove the limits from your life. Remove the boundaries. Remove the barriers. And just remember this. When you get rid of that limit, you push it out of the way or you overcome it and you remove the boundaries and the barriers, you only have to do it once. It, you, you, you learn how to do it, and if it's a barrier, if it's a boundary, if it's a limit, and you push it out of the way, you get it out of the way, you overcome it, you don't have to do that every day. It's, it's done. Once you kick the devil in the teeth, once you run the demons off, <laughs> I like what John Osteen said one time. He said he heard these little demons coming in front of his house, and one of them said, let's go in there and torment that preacher. And the other demon said, no, no, I tried that last week, and he beat the daylights out of me. <laughs> so... You can overcome and you can remove limits. Remember, Jesus is Lord over Arkansas and wherever you're watching. Too. Send your questions, comments, and testimonies to Happy Caldwell at Post Office Box 26207, Little Rock, Arkansas 72221 or email happycaldwell at vtntv.com. Remember to follow VTN on Facebook at VTN Your Arkansas Christian Connection and follow Happy Caldwell on Twitter at Happy underscore Caldwell. VTN is on Roku. Search VTN in the channel store and add us to your lineup. Today's episode is available to watch on demand at VTNTV.com and click watch. You can also watch VTN via live stream at VTNTV.com.